Hello guys, this video is about projectile motion. In part one, we will have the main lesson and in part two, it will be continued with problem solution. A very important prerequisite for this lesson is free fall. The links of free fall are in the caption. Please watch them carefully. But anyway, if you know the lesson, let's start. Suppose that I threw an object vertically upward. You know that this object will raise up, gets a big point, and then uh, comes down and will touch the ground. Normally, it's affected just by the gravitational pull of mg downward as we ignore the air resistance for the time being. So it's expected to have just the vertical downward acceleration of negative g. You know that in free fall, we always assume that the positive direction of y-axis is upward. So whatever which is measured downward will be a negative quantity like g. What if I make a deviation on initial velocity? I mean, the initial velocity may have a deviation from vertical. So normally, we expect to have a horizontal initial velocity like vx at the beginning and also a vertical component of the velocity vy. vy will be responsible for the same vertical free fall. But Vx will make a horizontal motion. So the object still is affected by the gravitational downward pull of mg. So the acceleration will be the same as negative g in vertical direction only. And the horizontal direction will be a uniform motion. Why? Because the, in uniform motion, the object is not acted by any force. Okay. Now let's continue in more detail. I told you if you threw the object like this with a deviation from vertical, it will experience a parabolic trajectory. At the beginning, let's say the initial vector for the velocity is V0. And V0 is decomposed into two horizontal and vertical components like Vx and Vy. If I assume that the angle between the V0 and the horizontal is theta, Vx is adjacent component, so it's going to be V0 cosine of theta, and Vy will be V0 sine of theta. At any point on the trajectory, the object will be acted just by vertical downward gravitational pull, so the acceleration vertically, Ay, will be negative g, and horizontally, Ax will be zero. The object will not be will not be under any accelerated motion in horizontal direction. So Vx will remain unchanged. So here, if the velocity is V at this point, it's decomposed again into two horizontal component of Vx and vertical component of Vy. But this Vx will be again V not cosine of theta because Ax is zero. But at the other point, even the Vy may be downward because it's all acted by the gravitational pull. But Vx, again, unchanged. So pay attention, it's very important. Vx will be uh, constant all along the motion because it's not acted by any force in horizontal direction as we ignore any air resistance, but vertically the same uh, free fall, downward free fall acceleration of negative g. Let's throw the object at the beginning to horizontal direction. There is no vertical component for the velocity at the beginning. The object will go forward to the right and also will fall down. Let's make a time lapse imaging, a periodic imaging, in which the time interval between a couple of images will be one second, whatever. Okay. Here I see the same Vx for all images. And normally I expect the same delta x for consecutive uh, time intervals. Because if the delta x here, let's say it's three meters. It will be three meters again, three meters again, and three meters again. It must be the same because in horizontal direction, I don't have any acceleration. So uh, according to the vertical downward acceleration, we will expect the same change as I mentioned for vertical displacement. So delta y at the beginning is different from delta y in the consecutive time interval. So it will be increased and increased due to the increase of the Vy in consecutive images. So the Vy will be different in all images, but Vx the same. This is a very easy case in uh, projectile motion in which we start uh, the motion with no vertical component. Projectile equations. What are the equations here? The equations are very easy. Let's consider the very general case in which we have a, an initial velocity of v naught with a norm, with a vertical v naught sine of theta 
uh, component for the velocity and horizontal component of v not cosine of theta. Here, at any point, I expect a displacement of delta x for uniform horizontal motion. So vx will be v not cosine of theta uh, whenever you want, and delta x will be vt. But v is exactly vxt. So the delta x obeys the rule of delta x equals vxt as it's a uniform motion. But as vx is v not cosine of theta, I plug in vx for v not cosine of theta. Uh, vertically, the displacement in uh, any arbitrary point could be delta y. First, you should notice that vy obeys the rule of uh, vertical accelerated free fall motion. vy is negative gt plus v naught, but v naught in y direction. As v naught in y direction is v naught sine of theta, so I write here v naught sine of theta minus gt. That's all. Delta y will obey the same rule for free fall. Delta y will be negative a half of gt squared plus v naught y t. But as v naught here is v naught sine of theta, I will plug in v naught sine of theta here. So it will be v naught sine of theta times t minus a half of gt squared. Finally, this is the time independent equation. You know that in vertical direction, vy squared minus v naught y squared will be negative 2g delta y. We do the same thing by substituting v naught sine of theta for v naught y. That's all. This is something we know about the um, equations of that motion. And moreover, I should emphasize that the Position vector is a vector uh, start started from uh, starting from the initial point and ending at the uh, final point. Final point is a point of interest. Any point, any arbitrary point on the trajectory. This is R. Normally, R when you start from uh, the origin will be delta x times horizontal unit vector i plus delta y times vertical unit vector j. Path equation or trajectory equation. You remember we had delta y to be negative a half of gt squared plus v naught sine of theta times t. Then I decompose delta y into y minus y naught. And I can take the y naught to the right side of the equation to get this equation. Then I remind you again, x was v naught cosine of theta times t. Let's say delta x is the same as x because x naught is supposed to be 0. Let's say it's 0. Now I rearrange the equation and solve it for t. Then t will be x over v naught cosine of theta. And let's plug in the t here and here. So I will have this equation. Now let's raise this part to the power of 2 and make a concise equation like that. Here you see that regardless of the coefficients, let's say this is a coefficient and it's another coefficient, the equation seems to be something like ax squared plus bx plus c. It's a standard quadratic function. This is why we say the trajectory is a parabola. Vt graphs. Vt graphs are very important and uh, mo mostly I use uh, the approach of Vt graph in my solutions because it's much easier. I told you the object is not acted by any horizontal force, so Vx will be constant. If it is started with V naught cosine of theta, it will be continued as well. So it will be a horizontal line. No slope because horizontal acceleration is zero. Vy is different. Vy for uh, the case like that, which at the beginning has a vertical positive component, we will start from here, v not sine of theta, but the slope of this will be g, negative g, of course, you know that, because vertical acceleration is negative g. That's all. And also, this point is exactly the peak point at which the velocity will be all horizontal, just v not cosine of theta as vx, and vy here will be 0. So here will be the peak point. Speed and velocity. 
let's take a point of interest like that. Here, the velocity is a vector tangent to the trajectory, and it will have a horizontal component of Vx and a vertical component of Vy. In this triangle, as the speed is the magnitude, is the magnitude of the hypotenuse of this triangle, speed raised to the power of 2 will be Vx squared plus Vy squared. So we can write this equation like that. This is the speed, the magnitude of the velocity. But the velocity is not just the magnitude of the speed. It, it also has a direction. So the direction will be related to alpha. To find the alpha, we can use the triangle here. And so I can write tangent of alpha to be vertical over horizontal, Vy over Vx. Pay attention, Vx is not uh, a variable. It's always a constant here for us. So Vy is responsible for any change in alpha. As in peak point, we have just V not cosine of theta, just the horizontal component and Vy zero. And because of that, upstairs will be zero at the peak point. So alpha at the peak point will be zero. Exactly here. Uh, pay attention, in free fall, when you threw the object vertically upward, at the peak point, the object will stop. But here at the peak point, it won't stop. It's moving, still moving to the right because the horizontal component is not lost. But vertically, yes, vertically is not moving. Air resistance in projectile motion. Let's uh, throw a couple of objects, one of them, the blue one, in absence of any drag force and your air resistance, and the red one in presence of air resistance. What happened here? With air resistance forces, the range and maximum height, range is the total displacement in horizontal direction, the range is a smaller than the blue one in absence of any air resistance. And also the height, you see, the height is a smaller than the height when you have no air resistance. But why is that? Let's consider. First, I should again go back to the no air resistance case and then I will continue with air resistance. In no air resistance, whenever you check the object, it has a velocity uh, as a vector tangent to the trajectory and vertical downward acceleration of g. Forget about the, neg neg the negative sign here. I'm just emphasizing on the direction, downward. And here also, the velocity will be horizontal, but again, the same g. Here, the velocity is deviated downward, but again, a is the same g. You see that the velocity makes the, uh, an obtuse angle with the acceleration here it's perpendicular to the acceleration and here it makes an acute angle with acceleration but there is no air resistance and because of that ax will be zero ay again emphasized to be negative g or g downward look at this one considering air resistance rather than mg the in presence of air resistance something is opposing the direction opposing direction uh, direction of motion means that a force like f as the drag force or air resistance is impeding the motion so because of that it will produce a couple of um, components in horizontal and vertical direction horizontal uh, component of the drag force will be fx producing uh, an acceleration horizontal direction and also fy which will be added to mg so the total acceleration in vertical direction also will be different ax normally according to the newton's second law f equals ma will be a equals f over m and f here is the fx the horizontal component and m is the mass of the object anyway whatever it is fx is not zero so ax is not zero the object is experiencing a horizontal leftward acceleration rather than that fy is also affecting mg so the total acceleration will be g plus fy divided by m why is that because ay will be the total fy divided by mass and total fy will be mg plus fy divided by m and if you separate the fraction, you will have g plus fy divided by m. This is the vertical acceleration. It's larger than the g. We had already just g downward, but it's larger than that. So basically, we believe that in uh, presence of air resistance, before the object gets the peak point, it's exactly before it gets the peak point, 
the horizontal acceleration is fx divided by m and the vertical acceleration is g plus something like fy divided by m larger than g what happens at the peak point at the peak point f is uh, the drag force is just horizontal because the velocity is horizontal and the drag force is always against the direction of motion so it's vertical horizontal to the left so it's not affecting the g it's just affecting the uh, horizontal acceleration so ax is still f divided by m and vertically the acceleration is the same so at the peak point the situation is a little bit different we have uh, again ax to the left but ay same g what happens after the peak point after the peak point there is again a drag force against the velocity so it's also a vector uh, tangent to the trajectory but against the velocity against the motion and it will produce a horizontal component of x fx and the vertical component of fy fx will produce again acceleration of ax which is fx divided by m and it will be con continued with another ay which is different from g why is that let me tell you th this one B basically the total vertical forces acting on the object will be mg minus fy so acceleration in horizontal direction will be fy in vertical direction sorry is fy divided by mass and it's mg minus fy divided by mass if i separate the fraction i will have g minus fy divided by m it's very important that this is smaller than g so here we expect after the peak point to have the vertical acceleration smaller than g still downward but a horizontal acceleration of x fx anyway you should pay attention that as the speed of the object is all changing along the motion fx is also changing because fx as a drag force is highly related to velocity it is not something regarded as a constant so it will be very complicated to find it provided we have the equation explaining the change of fx anyway but we consider the presence of a resistance to drag force Thank you very much uh, for watching this video. Thank you for being with me. Take care, review the lesson, and then continue for the part two, problem solution. See you.